right, we're going to take a look at how to take the derivative of logarithms. Well, kind of like our exponential. Specifically, we're only going to look at logarithms whose uh, base is e. Now, remember, a shorthand notation for writing log base e is the natural log of x. So we're going to need a couple of rules here, just like we uh, had for our exponentials. Uh, good news, again, pretty simple rules. The derivative of the natural log of x is just 1 over x. And if we take the chain rule into consideration, we're taking the derivative of the natural log of some function of u. It's going to be the same thing, 1 over that. But using our chain rule, we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So again, kind of two rules that are going to come into play, and we're just going to see how those uh, interact with all the uh, other rules that we've seen in the past. So find the derivative is going to be our instructions here for a little bit. So let's start out with a, a really, really uh, base one. Let's say y is equal to the natural log of 2x plus 3. Now, remember, the thing you're taking the log of is called the argument. So I'm going to use that a lot here. So when I say the argument, I mean what's inside the logarithm. Now, the easiest way to remember this rule, it's 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. So what's my derivative here? 1 over the argument times the derivative of that. The derivative of 2x plus 3 is just 2. So it's 2 over 2x plus 3. That quick and that easy. So if we had something like y is equal to the natural log of x squared plus 5x minus 4, and I said find the derivative, well, that's just a logarithm. So we know how to take the derivative of a log. It's 1 over its argument times the derivative of that argument. So the derivative of this would be 2x plus 5. Now we can clean that up just a little bit by writing uh, generally the derivative on top. So 2x plus 5 over x squared plus 5x minus 4. All right, not too bad, right? So uh, the way you want to memorize the rule is 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. All right, well, again, let's just start doing ones that are a little bit more complicated. What if I said it is x squared natural log of x? <laughs> All right, again, uh, we always got to do the same things when we take a derivative, and we see here that we have a product of two different types of functions, which means we need to do our product rule. So different color here, but let's see. We're going to call this u, and we're going to call that v. So let's put the pieces together. So if u is x squared, v is the natural log of x. u prime would be 2x, v prime is just 1 over x. And of course, the derivative of x is 1. Okay, putting our uh, uh, product rule together, u prime times v, so our derivative is going to be 2x ln x plus v prime times u, so that's 1 over x times x squared. So that second term there can reduce a little bit, and one of the x's cancel, and we just have x. Okay, so notice the, the product rule didn't change at all. We just added another derivative rule into the mix. So let's go way back over here and try one or two more of these. Again, I'm gonna leave the directions over there saying find the derivative. What if I said um, y is equal to the natural log of x all over x to the fourth? Okay, so here you can see, well, I have this fraction with two different functions, so I'm probably going to have to use my quotient rule. So if I call one u, the other one v, again, like always, u is the natural log of x, v is x to the fourth, u prime is 1 over x, v prime is 4x to the third. Now remember our rule is u prime v minus v prime u all over v squared. Slightly different than our product rule, of course. So y prime is going to be equal to u prime, uh, I'm sorry, this way, u prime times v. So that's 1 over x times x to the fourth minus v prime times u. That's just 
4x to the third natural log of x, all over v, x to the fourth squared. So it's crooked. Okay, so there's all of our pieces. Uh, we can simplify this just a little bit. Here, one of those x's are going to cancel, so I have x to the third minus 4x to the third natural log of x, all over power raised to a power we multiply, so that's x to the eighth. <coughs> now, if you left it like this, you'd notice that the answer in the back of the book is different because, again, we can simplify this just a little bit more. Uh, so, so what can we do here? We can uh, factor an x cubed out of the top and reduce. So y prime, if I take an x cubed out of the top, I have 1 minus 4 ln x all over uh, x to the 8th. Right, all I did is factor the x cubed out of the top. Now we can reduce some x's, so y prime would be 1 minus 4 ln x all over x to the Okay, so there we go. Uh, this one actually simplified quite a bit from our original answer. Uh, sometimes it happens, some doesn't, sometimes it doesn't, but always look to uh, simplify. Now there's another nice technique that we can do with logarithms when we've taken the log of a really complicated expression or the derivative of a log. So let's see if I said uh, y is equal to the natural log and let's do x plus 3 x plus 4. All right. Now if we were to take the derivative exactly the way it is right now watch what would happen. We have y prime is it's 1 over the argument times the derivative of this argument. And now when I do the derivative of this argument, I'm going to have to do the quotient rule for that just to get the piece that comes out here. But there's actually a lot easier way to do these a lot of times, not always, by using all of our properties of logs. Now I know in a previous video we covered these, and we know if we're taking the log of things joined by division, I can do the log of the top minus the log of the bottom. Remember, just following our, our rules for expanding logarithms. Now, if I take the derivative after that step of algebra, so y prime, or dy dx, one over the argument, that's easy. Come on. <laughs> one over the argument times the derivative of that argument, the derivative of that's just one, minus one over the argument times the derivative of that argument, which again is just one. So dy dx uh, is 1 over x plus 3 minus 1 over x plus 4. And there you go. So you notice that was much, much easier than what we uh, would have had to have done before. Now the book may get a common denominator and add these together. I don't care if you do that or not. You can, you can kind of do that on your own. But uh, there you go. So let's take a look at another one like this where we can use our property of logarithms first to simplify it to make the derivatives easier to do. So what if I had uh, g of x is the natural log of x squared, uh, let's do x plus three all over x to the fourth minus one. Ooh, ugly. Now, I'm going to start this one again, kind of the same idea that if we didn't do this first, how messy this would be. So don't write this. So if I go g prime of x, the derivative of a logarithm is 1 over the argument, so it's 1 over this, so we already get this horrible complex fraction, times the derivative of this argument. To do the derivative of this argument the way it is, we have to do the quotient rule. And then when we do the derivative of the numerator, we're going to have to do the product rule. So we got the product rule inside the quotient rule, and we already have a complex fraction started. So the algebra after that step would be horrific. However, if we just take a second and do a little bit of algebra uh, using our properties of logarithms, uh, we saw that if we expand an expression like this, we get the log of every term on the top with a positive coefficient. And the log of everything on the bottom, every factor on the bottom with a negative coefficient. Now we should be able to just take the derivative of each term now. So 
g prime of x, remember, 1 over the argument times the derivative of that argument, plus 1 over the argument times the derivative of that argument. That's 1 over the argument times the derivative of that argument. Okay, there it is. Now I'm going to clean this up just a little bit by uh, simplifying what I can. Here, one of these x's can reduce, and that's really just 2 over x, plus 1 over x plus 3, and I'm going to write that 4x to the cubed on the top, x to the 4th minus 1. And that's a perfectly acceptable way to leave your answer. Now again, the book may do a lot of extra work here and put this together as one fraction by getting a common denominator. Uh, if I were you, I wouldn't do that. It's a perfectly acceptable answer the way it is uh, for our needs. So, finding the derivative of a logarithm, remember your rule, it's 1 over the argument times the derivative of that argument. However, one of the nice things about logarithms is we actually can use the properties of logs to simplify really complex arguments into a bunch of simpler, more simple, simpler, easier uh, logarithms uh, to take the derivative of. So uh, make sure you're looking out for following those rules.